Welcome to Real Estate You with Letty Ann. Hey, welcome back to Real Estate You with Letty Ann, our season three of our podcast series. And we thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content so far, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Letty Ann and Associates Real Estate Services. Uh, that is our handle on YouTube so you don't miss an episode. So um, I have the privilege today of speaking with my coach, uh, Coach Rick Cheever. Uh, Rick is my coach in the Tom Ferry system, uh, uh, international really for, for the Tom Ferry system. And uh, I'm grateful to have Rick uh, as my coach. And um, just a little background about, about me. Uh, I've had a coach... Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer of spending money to make money. I'm also a big believer of playing up. I'm also a big believer of someone knows more than me. And I want to be sure that I've enlisted that coach who knows more than me uh, and knows how to get things done uh, so I can follow their lead and uh, become successful uh, by being a coaching client. So uh, I want to give a big shout out to Mark LeBlanc. Mark LeBlanc is a business coach out of Minneapolis. He's been a, a national uh, president of the National Speakers Association and so many other things. So uh, Mark LeBlanc, if you're watching, I thank you for uh, almost 10 years of coaching uh, in the past. Um, uh, I'm a big believer of coaching. And I have my current coach, Rick Cheever, who's on the line with me now from Colorado Springs. Are you in Colorado this week, Rick? I am. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I just honestly, from, from my heart, want to thank you for all that you do for me. And, and uh, I know that my uh, be being and becoming successful is really important to you. And uh, I don't want to tear up. So um, just, mm -hmm. just thanks for all you do. And thanks for being on my podcast today. This is your first episode uh, with me. Yes, indeed. And it is indeed a pleasure. So uh, you, you don't have to thank me. It's my honor and a privilege to coach someone as as in incredibly successful as you have been in the couple of years we've been together. The investment you've made in your coaching program, I think is, is more than paid for itself many, many times over, simply because of your ability to be able to take the lead and, and act on what our agreed assignments are every week when we coach. So trust me, the, uh, the gratitude is all mine and kudos to you and your success. Thank you, Rick. So, so Lady Anne, as your coach, I've always, often been very um, impressed with how you've continued to grow uh, every week, every month, and during the two years that we've been together. And you in that time have been doing this based on the fact that you own what we would refer to as a boutique brokerage. It's a brokerage that you uh, operate under your own name. And I often get asked by my clients, um, how is it that boutique brokerages can be so successful if they're not operating under a brand? So tell me, during these years that you've been a boutique brokerage, to what, what things have you been able to do to rise above being up from underneath the flag of a brand and being a boutique brokerage? Um, I've never been a follower and I'm not a, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not a fan of big box and I, like to forge my own path. I beat to a different drum. These are some things that others have said to me. Uh, but the biggest thing is, I like to think outside of the box. Um, and I honestly like to keep one foot in the uncomfortable zone, because that helps me grow every day. Uh, even this podcast, I, I agreed to do one season. And you know, if the first season, of course, it was a little uncomfortable, I don't know much about it, what what's going to happen with it. I mean, this is just a for example of the podcast. And as you know, I'm here in the Kansas City metropolitan area. And I don't know, uh, and if they're out there, please let me know. Uh, I don't know of any other real estate professional who's invested because it's an investment in a podcast series, um, for example. And uh, not that I wouldn't have done that if I'm not, and if I were at a franchise, or if I were at a big box place or an office of 50 plus people. Um, but I found, I, you know, I was in an office of 100, and then I was in, a, in an office of 60. And I didn't like to be like one of the fish in the sea, for one. And for two, as you know, Rick, in an office of real estate professionals, what would you say approximately 15% of the people in the office are actually doing the full-time work? Everyone else is either just enjoying coffee or they only go to the Christmas party. Um, and, uh, but they enjoy the benefit of the coffee and the Christmas party, but everything else in between, um, you practically don't see them. So 
for me, I wanted to get again out of my comfort level and start my own brokerage, um, forge my own systems, create my own path. I wanted, my goal is to provide the most exceptional and not just for me, but for the agents here in my office. Uh, again, I'm looking for quality agents. I'm not looking for quantity. I just don't want someone to hang their license here. I'm not looking for hobbyists. I'm looking for those who really want to make a difference in other people's lives. Uh, that's my system. And uh, second to that, or equally as that, I want, to, if someone loves real estate and helping people through the process of the real, you know, real estate transaction, I want to help that licensed person become so successful. I truly want, and I hope the agents that are in my office are here listening to this, I want them to make more money than I do. I want to be, I want them to become that successful. And I want them to use me as a conduit to get there. Like if I have ideas, uh, uh, come to me, let's build a plan. Let's find out what's working for you and what's not. And let's get you to the next level. Um, because as you know, even real estate agents in the business three to five years, uh, their business can plateau and they generally sell about the same thing every year. And for some people, that's okay. But some people want to challenge themselves and go, why can't I sell those five more units just to get to 25 or something like that? Um, so um, it's important to me, the service part of it and the experience part of it. And that goes for me to my agents and my and my agents and I to the consumer because I you know I say this a lot Rick I want to take this business back I think real estate agents get a bad rap I think there's a lot of people that are out there that don't have direction and really don't know what they're doing but maybe they're doing the best they can um, maybe they don't have a good mentor uh, I want to be that mentor uh, I want to be that coach I want to get them to where they want to go and I want them to be sure that they have you know the customer at the forefront. Uh, we're customer driven and uh, that is our uh, value and service based real estate company. Um, and I'm hoping that the word spreads and all the 11,000 agents right here in our own Kansas City Metro, it's a serious business. This isn't, I don't even know how one can do it or why you'd want to do it as a hobby. I really don't get it because the dues are so costly. It's a roller coaster ride of uh, struggles. Um, uh, but we solve problems for a profit. You know, as Tom often says, that's what we do. So if you're good at problem solving and you're okay with a roller coaster ride uh, and you're okay with a, a, an emotional ride with your clients, um, it's the most rewarding career one can have. So again, as a successful broker owner, and you've, you've said it a couple of times, you're a mentor to your agents. Uh, and that I think is, is lost with a lot of broker owners today and a lot of brokerages. Tell me, um, you are able to mentor your coaches or your uh, uh, agents to success. Uh, you're able to make your agents, quote, market proof and succeed in any market. Tell me what that means to you and how you have able to, been able to do that. I'm hearing something in the background. Is that your puppy? No, I think they're just, just so happens down the hall in my offices. Uh, I think they've started doing some work. So there please, is construction. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Just so oh, we know. Oh, oh, I'll, I'll turn off my mic. So you're not panting heavily or anything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, no, I'm getting, I've got to get back to that question. So you're saying I mentor my agents to success and I want to make them market proof. Yes, that's very true, Rick but I can only take somebody as far as they want to go. So it's a two way street. Um, I have agents here that are fine with what they're doing. I have a couple of agents that would like to do more. Um, I often tell them, let's meet, let's talk. You can shadow me. Um, let's talk about how you're doing the pricing. Let's talk about your approach for buyers. Let's talk about, um, but you know, you can't make people come to you uh, they have to have the want to say, you know what, I'm going to take you up on that offer for how do you do a buyer appointment? Uh, I'm going to take you up on your offer of uh, how do you do your two part listing um, uh, presentation? Um, so, and you know this because you're a coach, you can't make people do things. They have to have the want to say, okay, I I'm ready to get out of the box. I've been you know, working my business in, maybe it's time to try to do something different so I can move the needle or maybe I can help more people. 
uh, are enjoying enjoying the market uh, because there's such demand uh, in real estate today. Uh, we're coming out of COVID. The the barriers that have restricted us in the past months have now been pretty much um, um, let down. So there's a lot of people in the market, but we're enjoying this period where people are buying like crazy. This period is going to end at some point. How do you get your agents to be market proof so that when the downturn happens and it will happen, they're going to continue to rise above the competition and do well in even a down market? It's a, it's a process. You can't just go, oh my word, uh, someone shut the water off. What am I going to do now? You have to know that that water is going to, it's, it's going full bore right now, but someone's going to slowly shut that faucet down to maybe a, a trickle. So you, you have to look in advance to say, how am I going to sustain in this business? And, and that's where I'm hopeful they're going to reach out to me to say, how does this work? Because you can't do, you have to do something as a professional real estate agent, if you want to sustain, of course, this is a long-term business. This isn't, well, I think I'll get a license for a year, sell a couple of houses and pay off my American Express bill. That would be a really, really dumb reason to get a real estate license. Um, what we do every day, oh my God, I sound like you now. Whew, what, what, what we do every day to sustain in this business, because we are independent contractors. We're not punching a clock. We're, we're punching our own clock. So if you don't have discipline and if you're not doing consistently every day plus things that are outside of the box, and if you, I'm looking at the camera, if you as a real estate professional still think video, doing a video is outside of the box, it's, you know, you're, because what happens is technology changes and granted, we're all doing Zoom now, we're all doing virtual meetings. You know why? Because we have to, but would you have done it before? So you've got to stay one step ahead of the game um, and whatever's, whatever is working for you, do it consistently. So, and that, that could include video. You need to make your calls. You need to stay in touch with your sphere, not to ask them, you know, are you ready to sell your house? Are you ready to buy something? That, nobody likes that kind of phone call, right? It's to say, how are you and the kids doing? How's your mom doing? How's, you know, is she, you know, how are things with her? You know, this is a service business. And I've said this so many times, if you have a servant's heart and truly care about others, real estate will come to you. Like you can't teach service and have the love and the care for other people. I mean, you almost have to have service as your love language. So um, I don't know if that answered your question or not, Rick, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I think it does. So um Moving on to a slightly different topic, you are again in always in a recruiting mode to grow your agency. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, real estate agents out there who would love a home. And I know that uh, based on what I'm finding from my other clients, they're all uh, being met with agents who are begging them to, to come to work for a company that is well structured, that has a mentoring program, that has leadership like you do. So you can't take them all. So identify, if you would, for me and for the audience watching today, what kind of a real estate professional are you looking for to join your firm? And what, what make, is going to make them stand out amongst anybody else in the market? Um, a servant's heart first. Uh, want The true want of helping others. Um, next, I want a participant, somebody to participate. Participate in our weekly office meetings, whether it's via Zoom at their own home, whether it's in the office, however they want to do it. Uh, participate in learning. Participate in our um, teaching series that actually we're going to be filming and recording uh, in the latter half of this week. Uh, participate in the uh, Breakthrough by Design, our, what we offer agents uh, from our Tom Ferry. Uh, you know, I pay a lot of money, but like I said, it's not a whiny, well, I pay a lot of money. I think one has to spend money to make money. I am where I am today because I spent money. I spend money to go to conferences. I spend money on coaching. I spend money on my own lettyann.com real estate website 10 years ago. Lettyann.com, praise the Lord, I got that, right? Uh, someone told me, you know, if you tried to get that now, you'd never get it. Um, you have to think ahead. You can't stay in today. You always have to be thinking about tomorrow. So well, who I'm looking for, Rick, is someone who really wants to succeed in this business. And they look and I'm here to help them. 
Like I'm right here to help you. I'm here to go on listing appointments with you. Brokers don't do that. Brokers don't go on listing appointments with people. Uh, I'm here to be at the table or on the Zoom call with you for a buyer appointment. I'm here for you to come and shadow me. Uh, if I say, if someone's like, I really want to shadow you this whole month, what, whenever you have an appointment or whenever you have a closing, I'm I'm going with you. No ifs, ands, buts, no whiny complaints and excuses, hate excuses. Uh, I'm going to see that they have a want. They're going to succeed like crazy. Um, because if you go it alone and try to sort it out yourself, you're going to make double the mistakes that you would w- without having a mentor by your side. Um, and I'm all for the five minute funeral. We, we don't get them all. Um, we can't help everyone and you can't go like cry, put your head under the rug or even during COVID. Ha, ha, and I'll ask you how many agents around the country that, you know, cause Rick coaches, uh, 60 some people from around the country. Um, half of them hid under the carpet. Um, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn by revealing that. Um, but you can't because people still need to buy and sell. And they're looking at you as the real estate professional. So whatever you tell them, they're going to believe it to be true. So if you're hiding under your bed, well, then they probably went and hid under their bed too. So uh, I, if you want to play up, if you want to participate in an office culture, even a corporate culture, as Rick, the commercial real estate agent says, he says he misses the corporate culture of his office and uh, other professionals that aren't in the office, you know, wearing a maybe a sport coat and a nice pressed uh, button down or a golf shirt. You know, you're at home in your jammies. It's not the same culture. Uh, you're not communicating and socializing with people. And I understand the safety factor. Um, but my point is, if you want to get somewhere... In the real estate industry, in the residential real estate industry, I nothing would please me more than to get you there. And I love a challenge. So if someone says, look, I challenge you to have me sell 10 deals this year. Well, I can't do the work for you. But if you tell me where you want to go, we'll come up with a plan to help you succeed in those goals. And we'll start knocking out things that aren't working and replace them with things that are working. So um, I want to just a question then on that. You mentioned culture. Uh, three of the reasons people usually choose to stay or leave an organization is number one, loyalty. Number two, culture. Number three, support and systems. Define the kind of culture that you like to develop. The culture is, all, is always driven from the top down. What kind of a culture, Lady Ann, do you drive throughout your organization and what kind of a uh, culture do you hire or do you bring into your organization? Can you define that? Enthusiasm, uh, people who are wanting to continue to learn, uh, not just satisfied with, with where they are, uh, wanting to think and grow outside of the box. But I, thinking and growing outside of the box, I, I want that to be in an arena of us all together sharing those ideas. Because I could talk until the cows come home to myself, that's not going to help the other four people down the hall, right? Or the other four people that are at home. Um, uh, there's there's something to being together. And I always say hashtag better together because we are. I'm going to learn from you. Even our weekly calls, Rick. What if I didn't have a coach to hold me accountable? If I promised you last Thursday that I, last Wednesday that I was going to do something, I'm, my personality is such that if I don't do that, like, like I have to do it. If I said, I'm a person of my word. So um, I'm looking for people of their word and people who really want to make a difference in their community, um, people who are thinking outside of the box, uh, people, then I say licensed real estate persons or those who are considering a license. Um, having a want and the want is I want this to be my career because I love to help others. You know how nurses get into nursing because, you know, they, they have the, the, the want, they want to serve others and they want to help others and they want to take care of others. Like they have that already in, in them. It's the same thing to some degree with, a, with real estate. Unfortunately, p- too many people get a real estate license for the wrong reasons. And I'm not sure what some of the, some people say it's a hobby. Some people say I just bought it so I can, my husband and I can save, you know, $10,000 when we purchase a house. I'm like, be careful of what brokerage you go to because you may not be saving anything. Um, You know, um, I'm just here and I want to help 
consumers equally as much as I want to help real estate professionals uh, get to where they want to go and be happy with their business. I love this business. I love this industry. Um, and I want to take it back because too many people out there really not knowing what they're doing, whether it's their own fault or fault of others or lack of mentoring, or maybe they're just uh, people that don't have a kind heart and um, they're mis mischievous and um, because there's uh, all kinds in all industries uh, like that that uh, can't be trusted, uh, unfortunately, have given us a bad rap. Well, at, at Tom Ferry, we often talk about coaching our clients to become agents of the future. What got us here today is not going to get us to where we need to go tomorrow. Can I say that out <laughs> loud again? I just, I'm going to look at the camera. What got us here today, real estate professionals, will not get you there tomorrow. Um, and I think you know who I'm talking to. If, you, if I mean, anyone who's listening and um, they're scared to take the next step or they've been doing it for 15 years and they, they don't want to learn new tricks, um, I'm feeling for them. And, and if they're afraid to take the next step, well, come on over. Let me help you and show you how to take the next step. It, it's really not that scary. So in your mind, how are you coaching your um, agents to always focus on working outside their comfort zone to develop themselves to, quote, become the agents of the future every single day? It's a little, it can be a little more difficult than it sounds because the word always is, is, uh, difficult. I'm always here for them. Um, but I can only meet them where they are. Does that make sense? And I'm hoping that makes sense to our viewers. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I'm still struggling a lot with the video and, and uh, I'm still struggling and I'm not struggling with video. I've been doing video for at least three years on social media, at least. Uh, I found a video I did three years ago. Um, but you can't, um, you have to meet, it's kind of like COVID and the safety, you know, when we go talk with a homeowner, we meet them at their safety and comfort level, right? Are you okay with us coming in your home? Uh, are you, are you okay with the, you know, we'll wear a mask or do you want to do virtual zoom? It's kind of the same thing with an agent who's, you, you can't hit someone over a head with a bottle and say, do a video, damn it. Um, well, I mean, you, you just can't, and you can't even, you know, Rick, you're a coach. Um, I, I could make up some BS answer for you. Uh, so, <clears throat> some people are just comfortable where they are and they don't want to do anything else. Some people have private accounts and they don't want the world to see what they're doing. Um, you can't, uh, you can't make people do things, um, especially when they're independent contractors. So you have to meet them where they are. But I think they all know that I'm here. For, I mean, whatever, whenever they need something. Right. So. Okay. So what you're telling me, what I'm hearing is that you, because you do so much video and that you're so good at it, and you're very modest as well. Uh, your narrated videos on your listing properties have done an ex exceptional job of keeping you out in front of uh, your competition. They've gotten you, uh, in many cases, where you are today. You're coaching your own agents to do the same, and they're doing it. They're doing a very good job at it. Can you can you um, explain to your viewership today to what degree you've realized the success? out of going out, trying new things, doing the videos, how much has that contributed to your success? Well, you know, I don't do the videos for my success. I'll tell you why I do the videos. I do the video, I do copious amounts of videos to, sh to lead by example, just to say, hey, other agents, hey, agents in my office, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I'm a mom or so, not a mom, not that I'm their mom. It's not what I'm saying. But my point is I'm trying to lead by example to say it's really easy. Whip out the phone. You don't need this. If you saw this setup for here for the podcast, this is high tech, serious stuff that I invest in. This is my third season of investing in it. I have the most fabulous producers, uh, Mr. Green Marketing. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you can whip out your phone. You don't have to buy anything. If you want to invest in a $10 selfie stick. So one, I do the videos to show how easy it is to do videos. One, I do videos with no makeup and wacky hair just to go, hey, it's still me. Who cares? 
even my produ- my producer, I'm like, is my hair sticking out? And he's like, well, if, if you put, I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's, I mean, does it really matter? <laughs> it doesn't matter. And, and I s- tell people, the more you prepare to do a video, it's going to be the worst video ever. It's going to be so staged. You're going to have like make, makeup and lipstick that you never wear on a normal day anyway. And you're not even going to look like yourself. Plus, you're going to have yourself so worked up and nervous because you've gotten ready for it. You're going to go, you know what? I'm not even going to do it. So, um, so I do video for to lead by example. And I do video, the listing videos that you mentioned, um, I do that for my, my client. I don't do that for me. It has nothing to do with me. Um, in fact, I'm, I tr- I'm, I'm sometimes in it just because I'm in a funny and quirky, you know, I like to do fun, weird things to maybe, so people watch the video a little bit longer. But most of the time, I'm just in the front of the video at the very beginning, introducing the address. And uh, then uh, myself or my office coordinator will, will, you know, go through the house with the videos. I do it for the client. I don't do it for me. Uh, why am I doing this podcast? I do the podcast to promote a lo- local businesses. I like to cross promote. Um, uh, you know, half of these podcasts are for my guests. It's about their business. Uh, maybe not this one particularly, but you offered to to interview me, and I said, okay, that sounds like a fun, different twist. Why not? You bet. Um, so I love to promote local. I'm not a fan of big box. I don't like to be one of a crowd. I always want to keep one foot out of my comfort zone because how am I ever going to grow if I'm not doing that? And I'll tell you, if I'm looking for a mentor or someone, if I was getting started in this business, I would work for me. (laughs) I would work with me. I'm fun. I can be a little pistol sometimes. Uh, I know that, but uh, I can go from zero to 60 in the goodest of ways. Goodest? Uh... And the other way as well, just ask my husband. But um, this is fun. I mean, come on, you got to make your work fun. And you have to have the discipline as an independent contractor. We're real estate agents. And I'm going on almost 20 years of doing this. And I still love it because you know what? I love the challenge. Every day is a challenge. If you're looking for easy street, don't get a real estate license. (laughs) Would you agree, Rick? Absolutely. I, um, you're kind of laughing. What are you laughing at? Well, I, it, it, you're explaining uh, and describing a lot of what really exists out there. And well, of course, I'm, I'm a realist. I'm a real estate agent. Uh, and I use that um, that term as a pejorative. We at Tom Ferry like to know that what we coach are real estate professionals. They have that drive and desire to want to change, to want to grow, to want to succeed, to work outside their comfort zone. So, And, um, and you're the epitome of that. So, which is why it's so much fun to do what we get to do as coaches. Oh, awesome. Rick, thank you so much. I'm just reminding you, I'm speaking with my coach, my Tom Ferry coach, Rick Cheever today. He's out in Colorado Springs, you lucky duck. And um, anyway, it's always good to see you. I I thank you for all of your support and uh, your coaching and your friendship, Rick. I love you. It's been an honor. (laughs) And I look forward to many years of the same. So good luck with this. And uh, let me know how we can help support you further. Okay. I appreciate it. Have a super day, Rick. Thank you, Lydia. All All the best for you. Thank you.